yeah. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad news. What's going on, everybody? You have made it to that effing sports show. Glad you're back. We're here with Adam Hulse, and we're starting a little something special this week. We're going to carry it all the way to the start of the season, and we're going to break down the schedule for every team and kind of do a little records predicting, win-loss predicting, see who's going to eventually end up in the Super Bowl. We're going to kind of ruin your whole season. We got Adam Holes here. Adam, welcome back. You ready to do this thing? Well, look, it was so much fun doing every team in every division leading up to the draft that, hey, let's just do it again right now that we're post-draft. I mean, we got these new teams, and we're going to start in the NFC South. We're starting in the NFC South. We'll work through all the teams. NFC South, probably between the NFC and the AFC South, probably the two worst divisions in football, in my opinion, overall. The interesting thing here, and you brought it up right before the show, four new quarterbacks across the board. That seems like something that really doesn't happen that often. Like, I don't have a stat on it or anything like that, but it's, like, hard to remember a situation where all four teams in the division have a quarterback change. Yeah, craziness. So we're going to start in Carolina. Carolina with the most prolific change. They get number one pick. They get Bryce Young. You know, is he, isn't he big enough, tall enough, fast enough, good enough? Frank Reich coming in. Not a horrible schedule, to be perfectly honest about it. But then again, they play in the NFC South, so they're going to play all the NFC. South teams and they're going to play all the AFC South teams, which I just said were the two worst teams in the division. So really all four of these teams, dumb and dumber, one in a million, you're saying there's a chance. Somebody's got to win this thing is ultimately it comes out to. Carolina's kind of looking like they got a decent chance if Bryce Young pans out. Just think back to last year. I mean, the Panthers were one game away from making the playoffs winning that division last season and, you know, the Bucks ultimately got it done. It's kind of going to be I think that same feel this year. I don't I don't think any of these four teams are going to be great this season. They're all pretty close talent-wise, and somebody has to win it. The Bucks were not that good last year. They found their way to the playoffs more because their division was really bad than them doing anything that deserved the shot in the playoffs. And it's going to be the same type of thing this year. Yeah, kind of a crapshoot, really. And so this one, we kind of pick one of the harder ones to start off with because you can't just give them all an L because I don't think they're going to lose everything. Carolina travels to Atlanta for game one. So we're going to get to see the number one quarterback versus the number one running back. We'll open with this. Carolina had... The 23rd worst pass defense, 18th worst run defense. Atlanta not doing much better. 25th worst pass defense, 23rd worst run defense. There's been changes. I don't know if there's been a lot. And so we've really kind of got just all new situations. Bryce Young, Ritter. We got new backfields with Foreman out of Carolina. It's going to be a dogfight for this first opener. And I actually have Atlanta winning this one. I agree with you. I think Atlanta is going to win that game. More so for me because they can really rely, I think, on their running game. Tyler out here looked really good last year. They obviously brought in B. John Robinson this year. Both quarterbacks are going to have a big learning curve, in my opinion, being starters now, Desmond Ritter and Bryce Young. I think with the Falcons running backs, that's what's going to be the difference in this one. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, then they go on to New Orleans. I'm handing them the loss against New Orleans. Derek Carr coming in has got a great receiving core. Carolina, again, not a fantastic pass defense. First home opener. I think Bryce will perform well, but I think Derek Carr, Derek Carr typically plays well at the beginning of the season. So I gave New Orleans the win on this one. New Orleans definitely the more talented team when you look at them top to bottom, but Carr had a pretty talented team last year as well with the Raiders and couldn't get it done. So it's going to be interesting thing to see what he does with the Saints. And so uh, we're going to keep track of this whole thing for you guys. Uh, and we'll see how we did. Are you giving Carolina the win or the loss on this one? Uh, I give it to the Saints. Okay, so we're in agreement so far through the first two. Carolina travels to Seattle for game three. I just think Seattle's just got them outmatched pretty much everywhere. That's why they play the game, but I got Seattle winning this one pretty easy. I agree. I think Seattle wins the game. For me with Seattle, even if Gino has serious regression, which is a very real possibility this season. Seattle's so good everywhere else that they still might be a pretty good team, even if Geno goes backwards. No, 100%. I like, I always like, give Seattle a little bit of edge at home, but you bring up a great point about Geno regression possibility. I'm sure we'll talk about that more once we get into that division. Game four versus Minnesota. They're at home, and we know 
Minnesota's pass defense was absolutely freaking horrible last year. I'm actually going to give Bryce his first home win on this one. I'm, I, I think they can take Minnesota. Yeah, well, here's the first one we're going to disagree on, I guess, because I'm still going to give it to Minnesota. I'm not particularly high on Minnesota in general this year, but I just think that they're still a better team than Carolina, and it's going to take some time for the whole Bryce Young project to come together. It definitely could. I'm, it's going to be fun to watch some of these games play out. They go to Detroit for game five. I really like Detroit this year. I think they start bringing some stuff together. I hate to do it, but I just... I got to hand Carolina another loss on this one. I'm with you. I'm giving it to Detroit. Look, Detroit believes. Now, what that's going to turn into this year, we'll see. But that organization believes that they have the team this year. We talked about Detroit a lot during the draft episode. Their decisions in the draft is a team saying we're going for it right now. Yeah, 100%. And I think Detroit's going to be one of those dark horse teams that isn't so dark. Everybody's going to be watching them this year to see what they do. Everyone loves Detroit right now. They're everyone's second favorite team. You know, like how can you not like Detroit and give them a shot considering their franchise history? Like if you're hating on Detroit, like you're just like a next level hater because there's nothing to hate about Detroit right now. Yeah, I would kind of agree with that. Here's a fun one. So after Detroit, they're, they're on two game road trip. Carolina goes down to Miami. I might catch a lot of flack for this one. But I'm giving Carolina the win in one of those games that they shouldn't win because there's always those games on paper. It's like, this is obvious. Miami's totally going to destroy them. And that could happen. But I'm going out on a limb. I'm going to give Carolina the win in Miami. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Um, I mean, you know, to your point, I mean, you know, a guy we talked about a lot is Tua. If Tua's not in the game, Carolina definitely has a chance to win that. But I'm going to make the assumption that Tua will be healthy. I know that's kind of a big assumption to make, and I'll take Miami. Yeah, I know I'm going out on a little on that one. I, I'm okay to be out there by myself. Then they hit the bye week, feeling okay. Hopefully, they're they're making progress. Hopefully, they're seeing good things, flashes in the pan and stuff. And I think they walk into a pretty nice schedule after the bye week. So they got Houston right after the bye week. We get our Young versus Stroud matchup. Regardless of what you think of Stroud and what he's going to bring to that table, I just don't think Houston is set up for success success yet i give carolina the win at carolina got carolina in this one i like the direction that houston is going in but that's also going to take some time for it all to come together i agree after the bye week getting kind of a favorable matchup in houston while we both agree that we like Stroud better than Young, I will give the Panthers the win in this one. Yeah. And then they get then we get the other matchup. Then we get Young versus Richardson. Richardson and the Colts come into town right after Stroud. Young's feeling pretty good, high off that win. I do think the Colts are going to be decent, but this is Frank Reich's old team. He knows them. He knows the players. I think he's going to know how to beat them, and I think Carolina takes home a second win. I agree. This is like the... Frank Reich revenge game, if you will. And look, I'm not as particularly high on Anthony Richardson as a lot of people are. You know, I think he's going to be a fun, like, fantasy guy to add because of the rushing yards. But I just think he's going to be a serious project as a legitimate NFL quarterback. I think the Colts are going to struggle this year, and I do think the Panthers win this game. Yeah, and then they head over to Chicago. This was a tough one for me because I really think Chicago is going to be better on the ground. Carolina did not have a great rush defense. It's going to be you know, Bryce's first introduction to the cold, although it's probably not going to be that super cold that's going to happen later on in the year. It's outside. It's in Chicago. I don't. How do you got this one playing out? I'm going to give it to the Bears here because I do think that the Bears are going to be an improved team this season from last year. And if I'm going to believe that the Bears are going to be better this year, team like Carolina, that's a game that they kind of got to win to do so. So I give it to the Bears. Yeah, I will go ahead. I had them down for a win and I'm going to go ahead and keep it just because I'm, I'm going to let that difference in opinion be the driving force there i'm gonna give carolina the win but only really just to disagree with you is really the biggest reason behind that because 
The next week, Dallas comes to Carolina. Again, this is one of those ones on paper that seems lopsided. I actually agree with this one. I think Dallas going to be kind of feeling it this year, and I think Dallas beats Carolina easily in this one. Dallas should win that game big, definitely taking Dallas there. But going back one more week, back to that Bears-Carolina game, we didn't even mention that's the DJ Moore revenge game. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point. So, I mean, I guess that's edge Chicago in that one as well. But um, we'll still stick with the difference. I know I knew you're going to take uh, Dallas with the win in that anyway. Then they go to Tennessee. Of course. Tennessee is also another one across all these teams. Tennessee is one of those teams that is just for me really hard to figure out this year because especially as we get later in the season I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback number one and number two I don't know which Tennessee we're going to get I mean they had the number one rush defense in the NFL and they had the 32nd ranked pass defense in the NFL last year so it's literally I don't know how you grade these guys Carolina goes to Tennessee what are you thinking I agree I don't know what Tennessee is this year I mean let alone later in the season who's their quarterback in week one is it Tannehill again is it Malik Willis is it Will right. Levis? I mean, any one of those three guys could play at any point this season, and we really don't know what their plan is. There's still trade rumors around Derrick Henry. We don't know if he's going to be there. Are the you know Titans going to blow it up and start over? So many question marks with the Titans, and because they seem like this kind of team in limbo right now, I give it to the Panthers. Yeah, I did. I, I gave it to Tennessee. I did. I don't want to change it just because you make sense. <laughs> I said, I mean, can we take neither in this one? I know, right? Yeah, can we? Can we I guess we could take a tie, go out on a limb. <laughs> After Tennessee, they go to Tampa. I don't have Tampa winning a lot of games. I probably will get into Tampa shortly. I probably gave them more than I should, but I actually uh, have, well, I do have them beating Tampa in Tampa. Baker Mayfield, he's going to kill it for me all year. He's going to be the reason that I hand Tampa a lot of losses. I give Carolina the win in this one. I'm going to give it to Tampa. I think Tampa's a team this year who's going to have to win ugly in a lot of games. I think their defense is actually still going to be pretty good because of Todd Bowles, because of the roster that they have there. I think they're going to have to win low scoring. Again, ugly type of wins, and I think this is the kind of game they can win ugly, so I'll give it to the Bucks. You're giving it to the Bucks. Yeah. Then they place, then they go to New Orleans. We had them losing to New Orleans in week two in Carolina. I actually have Carolina beating New Orleans in New Orleans in week 14, so both teams I have losing at home against each other. How are you feeling about this later matchup? I'm going to give the Saints the sweep in this one. Look, New Orleans at at home is always tough, especially now for a rookie quarterback like Bryce Young getting his first taste to that dome in New Orleans. Give me the Saints. There you go. Valid argument and definitely something that I toyed around with, but I like Carolina to start feeling it. Then they play Atlanta in Carolina. I give Car- Carolina the win again. I give Carolina the sweep. Yeah, I'm splitting this one. I gave Atlanta the win in the first one. I'll give Carolina the win in the other one. They're kind of equally not so good team so it's what makes sense to me all right and then we get an interesting matchup and this is going to happen actually a lot in the nfc south which is interesting they play a lot of the same teams carolina welcome green bay into their stadium so they don't have to play in that green bay cold will the packers have it all together are they as good i mean are they really going to be that good honestly is the question i actually have carolina beating green bay in carolina in week 16 I'm actually going to agree with you. I'm going to take Carolina as well. I'm not a believer in Jordan Love. Um, I just haven't really seen anything from him that, for me personally, makes me all that optimistic about him. Honestly, just from, like, an odd standpoint, too. Like, the fact that they went from Favre to Rodgers is just, like, unbelievable as it is. Can they really do it again? Can they really have, like, three stud quarterbacks in a row? I mean, the chances of that happening are, like, slim to none. If they do it, there's something going going on in in Green Bay. So you, you're giving Carolina the yeah. win as well? Yes. Yeah. Then they go to Jacksonville. Do we need to spend a lot of time on this? Yeah, baby. Yeah. Give me Trevor Lawrence. 100%. And for the final game of the season, it's against Tampa. I hate giving Tampa away. You know, I had, I'm going to do it before you speak. I had given Carolina the loss on this one, just as kind of a split. I'm going to give Carolina the win against Tampa. I'm going to change my answer. I'm doing it right now in front of everybody. There we go. I changed it. What say you, my friend? I'm going to lean Tampa in this one just from a standpoint that I think 
think Tampa can compete for this division title, and the game might mean something to Tampa. I don't see Carolina with the rookie quarterback really winning this division, so it could be one of those situations where the game's meaningless for Carolina, meaning full for the Bucs, and that's why I'm going Bucks. All right, so I've got you giving Carolina six wins, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds fair. And I actually went the exact opposite. So you got them going six and 11. I've got them competing uh, for the division title. Looking at my sheet, it seems big, but I just think that their schedule sits nicely. I think it you can happen. run to the sports book and bet the over on Carolina. Because... <laughs> I, might, I might have to. I might have to. But we'll see if we can justify it later on as we run through these other divisions. I may have gone a little high. You may have gone a little low. You may have been spot on. I, I would tend to side with the Adam Holtz from Adam Holtz Sports. Thanks for joining us on Bat FN Sports Show. We're going to do every division. We're going to do every team. We started off with Carolina. Catch the next one, and we will see you soon. Say any negative thoughts. I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong. I won't stop to the top, so you better back off and get lost. I'm going to stay loud, stay proud. Never running out. Never heading south. I'll be spreading out. Call it word of mouth. Can't put me down. I'll be getting loud. You can never doubt. Not what I'm about. Have your f-